Okay, today we are going to learn about the orange. You can open your orange and let's see how we can work with the clustering in the orange. So for the first example, I will just use the iris data. As you may know that you know, we have four attributes, sample length, sample width, petal length, and petal width, and we have one target, which is iris. And we are going to learn how we can do clustering. So what is clustering? We have the target here. But actually, in a clustering, it is unsupervised. There should be no target. And you know, usually, we have our experiment with this kind of data, and we will check it. Let's see that now I, want, I do not want to use the target. I will just select the important columns. So I will remove iris. Why do I remove iris? Because it is an unsupervised learning. In the unsupervised learning, we assume we have no target. And after we remove this one, now we can just run with the hanging. There is a function, there is a widget k-means. And if you click on this widget, you can have some options. The first option is how many clusters you want to create. So this is what we call it as the k. k is the integer number represent what is the number of the group. If it is fixed, then yeah, you can just determine. Let's say I know that there are three flowers. So I just determine the k equals to three. That's also fine. So that's why one of the uh, important things in k means or in a clustering sometimes the number of k is subjective but the the audience provide also another option so they give you experiment when the k equals to two and yeah k equals to two and we will check what is the result and then again check k equals to 3 until a. So they perform this experiment from 2 until 8 and then you can see the silhouette scores. I will explain the silhouette scores in the next next week what is the silhouette score but for now you can see that the highest one silhouette score if it is closest to one, then it is the best. Okay. Then the result will be two. We have three types of flowers, but the result is two. So which one will you choose? So this is very subjective. Even though the statistics or the metrics say that the best is two because we as the human know that there are three flowers so we can just say that i will select three even though the score two is the highest it is because we know the knowledge it is because we know the flower but if we do not know the flowers, we do not know the knowledge, then we will use this form. And we can check what 
is the meaning by the result. You can make the scatter plot. Actually, if you want to see the result of this schemes, you can make a data table. In the data table, you will see there is one, uh, there are two columns, two additional columns. The first column is the cluster. So the cluster, I think if you remember in the example that I gave you in the PowerPoint, we have a new column cluster. It represents where this data belongs to. So this data belongs to C1. And this is the silhouette score. If you look at those numbers, so the lowest the, the lower silhouette score it goes to C2. We have only two. That's why now we have the C1 and C2. You can look at the distribution. For example, you want to make the distribution, you can do it. I want to know how many clusters do we have. And you will look at the C1, there are 50. And then C2, there are 100. And if you want to look at the scatter plot, You can look at the X and the Y, and you can change the color. Let's say I want to change the color based on the cluster. So now I can see that this is the cluster one. The blue color is the cluster one, and then the red color is the cluster two. I think we can change with the pattern width and pattern length like this one yeah, if you still remember i can try to create the same plot let me create the scatter plot again this is the original data okay and then So if you look at this two scatter plot, the left one is the original data. And you can see there are three flowers. This is Iris setosa, this is Iris persicola, and this is the Iris virginica. Because we are creating only two clusters, then there are only two colors, blue and red. So this is the cluster one. Okay. It seems that it is good. So these two represent the real world situation. But what about this? Actually, we need to distinguish between the green and the red. But because the country scores show that two is the best. That's why they are in one group. Now, let's say if I know that there are three, okay, so I will change this. Now, A means I change to three. So you can select, you can select on the K equals to three. The silhouette score is 0, 4, 5, 9. It's lower than the K equals to two. But if you look at this one, then you can see that, okay, it seems it represents the real world. Because yeah, the blue color is the same with here. And then, oh, maybe I need to change it. This is the petal length and this is petal width. I think it's better here, okay. okay. Then you will see this one and this one. 
they are in the same group. And then here, okay, some of them are mismatched, like this one, this is blue. So it is C1, but this one is the iris pluginica. So some of them are not correctly clustered is on the real world models. But this is the result in the clustering and we can sometimes use it. So the second one is the how we can create the hierarchical clustering. As you might know that we can do the hierarchical clustering using the distance metric. So we can just connect the select column with the distances. We can connect this one with the distances. So in the distances, you can measure the distance between the row, or you can also measure the distance between the column. And then you can select the distance metric. Are you going to use Euclidean, Manhattan, Poisson, Jacquard, Sperman, Absolute Sperman person, Absolute person, Hemming, Harlan, Wish, Bhattacharya? So there are so many similar dimensions. Okay. And let's say I'm just using the Euclidean. Yeah, if you want to look at this plot, actually, um, we can select the distance map or uh, distance metrics. So this is the distant metric. So they measure every distance, uh, the distance for every object. After they got the distance of every object, okay, let me just not using this distance metric. I will just use the hierarchical clustering. So the hierarchical clustering, it will show you directly the dendrogram. So this dendrogram, I think you already know the meaning. This is the distance. 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1, and so on. So it can be the cutting point. And then let's say I want to use the average linkage. So you can choose what is the linkage. If you still remember our example in the PowerPoint, we use the single linkage. So this is the result of the single linkage. If you choose to weight it, yeah, yeah, this is the result. If you use the complete, yeah, you can see this result. If you use what, then you can see this result. I think you already know what is single, what is average, what is complete. Some people say that what might be the best for the hierarchical clustering, but you need to check more with your data. We have another uh, information. So what is the annotator? So you can annotate it with the respective of the attribute. Or you can also prune. So prune means yeah, you can just select the maximum depth of the tree. I don't want to prune it. So if you prune, yeah, it will be like this one. So the tree will be much smaller. So yeah, actually, um, then this is might be the highest one. And the selection, you can select whether you want to select the data. Let's say, okay, I want to make the cutting point. Okay. So the cutting point, where is the cutting point? 
then you can select the line. If the line is here, then you may see that, okay, now I'm selecting like three clusters. So there's cluster one, cluster two, and cluster three. If I move this line to this, then, okay, I have cluster one and cluster two. So it depends on where you put the line. If you put line here, then this is cluster one, cluster two, cluster three, cluster four, and cluster five. So let's say I want to make only three. And you can you can see this one, the hit ratio is 30, what, 39%. Or let's say you want to just select top three. So the top three means you want to select only three clusters. Then yeah, you can see there is the three clusters. And after you have this, you can continue with the data table. And again, you will see this object belongs to cluster one. This object belongs to cluster three. This object belongs to cluster two. So if you already have this data, then you can try to find something good to make it as a classification. So we can do the select column again. Now I'm going to use all the data. It is the same with the original data, but I'm using the target, which is the cluster. I'm not using the flower information. So I would like to see whether the cluster information can be used for a classification or not. Then you can make the tree, and then you can make the tree viewer, and then check. So this is the result of the tree, and we can say that this is based on the clustering result. If you still remember, in the first part of a classification, I explained to you about self-supervised learning. Did you remember? What is self-supervised learning? In this case, we do not have the label. And we are going to make pseudo label. What is pseudo label? We are going to create the label based on the similar properties. So this is one of the objective on the clustering. So we want to select the label based on the clustering. And after we have the labels, we follow with the supervised learning approach. So after we have the label, after we have the label from the clusterings, we continue with the classification. Here also, actually, you can select which one is the best, the hierarchical clustering or humans. So it is very subjective. And we will learn more about the matrix. So let's say I'm choosing the hierarchical clustering, then you can make the follow like this. And if I want to choose the result from the k means, then you can also do the same. You can select the column and then change this features according to the original features. And then I can make the target as the cluster. And then I can make the tree and I can make the tree fewer. So, yeah. Maybe you can compare later. What is the best accuracy? Whether the k-means give you a better accuracy or the hierarchical clustering give you a better accuracy. If you want to check, yeah, it's not that 
digital you can just put this one and this one okay let me just do the cross validation Very different show, here we go. Okay. This one is not the test data. Okay. So you can see that the accuracy is zero point nine four seven. Okay. And then if you can look at this one, you can again do the same. Okay. This accuracy is ninety nine percent. Then maybe we can choose the higher vehicle clustering because it gives a better accuracy for the clustering. So that kind of things, yeah, you need to do more, many experiments. Okay, so that's the first data. This is the Irish data, and I think it's not that difficult. Let's move to the second data. Uh, first, I thought that I'm going to do this as your assignment, but let me give you an example how to do this one. So I will give you another assignment later. If you still remember the data set, the auto MPG. Let me use this data set. The auto MPG data set. If you still remember, this data set contains of several information like this one. The MPG is the miles per gallon, and there are several information types according to the car properties like the cylinders and displacement, horsepower, and etc. Now, I'm going to do the clustering. How can I do the clustering? Uh, let me check the problem. So, use the K means to select the best K based on the serial score. So, we can have the. Oops, it's wrong. So, we have the data table again. Let's see this column. Basically, yeah, you can put all of them in the features, or you want to remove this one. I think it's the same. So let, let's see this one. If I just keep the original content like this, and then I do the chemix, okay, there will be no problems. So the chemist will give you the result. So even though you do not remove the target, the chemist will give you the result. And this result, actually, they are just using the numerical data. So they already know what is the numerical values, and they just use that numerical values for the chemist calculation. This is the uh, easiest way. Okay. You don't need to consider the error. Okay. If you use the Jupyter, maybe you need to select only the numerical data. But using Orange, then Orange will know which numerical data will be calculated and which 
are the data that you don't need to calculate. So like this Harlem, the truck, the, uh, because MPG is the target, so they do not consider the MPG. And now you can make the clusters. This on this one, what is the best cluster? The highest one. So it means K equal to two. And if you look the second question, we want to use the hierarchical clustering. We need to select the uh, including distance. This one. Explain the meaning of the clustering. I forgot to explain this one. So how can we explain? Usually we explain it with the scatter plot. So this is the very simple way to do the explanation. And we need to select only the numerical attribute. So let's say I have the displacement and the horsepower. So this can be changed to the cluster and yeah, you can have a meaningful insight from this. What does it mean? Based on this scatter plot, we have the cluster one is the lower displacement and the cluster two is the higher displacement and also you can see from this one so there's a, a kind of cut line here that the high horsepower is in the cluster two and the lower horsepower is in the cluster one so you and make something like this one, then this is the cluster one, so this is the cluster two. So the cluster two is the higher displacement and higher horsepower. Can I see from the another attitude? So you can check. What about the way? Oh, this is also very distinct. So you can see that, okay, this data and this data. So the displacement, it seems they are the proper uh, cut line for this cluster. Or you can also see this one, this is the higher and this is the low. But yeah, some of them are mixed this one, so we cannot say anything. So the displacement is more obvious to distinguish this data. And yeah, you can check more. So you can check for every of the possible uh, attributes. Let's say horsepower and acceleration. Okay, yeah, you can also see that it is clearly distinct. And you can give your analysis based on every of this study. The hierarchical clustering, okay. in the hierarchical clustering, we need to use the distance. And after we have the distance, yeah, I want to measure with the inclusion. You can see here is normalized. So normalized means you want to uh, you want to make it as a normalized data. Maybe they are using the very simple normalization. Okay. In Python, I think they use the min-max normalization for the people. Then you can use the hierarchical clustering to see the result. And you can select what is the best one. If you look at this dendrogram, yeah, maybe this is too many. Okay. So we cannot see what is 
clearly distinct data from this one you can select the average or you can select single but if you select single you can see that the tree is not balanced so the tree is like this one there's one data here but the remaining is in the other three so using single is not balanced what about the average okay the average seems a little bit balanced what about the weighted okay weighted is seems is also fine is also balanced of the tree and then the complete the complete seems also balanced and what about the what okay what is also showing a balance and they can distinguish more so we can do some experiment for every of these linkages to see which one is the best tree and after you find let's say i am considering to use what because it shows more balance between the groups then you can select what is the good end for this one now let's say i'm using three then we can look at the data okay the group three is more in this data this is the cluster two and this is the cluster one and you can look at another possibility if i use the complete then the cluster seems oh, yeah, not that properly distributed if i use the average well, we can see this result so sometimes i can say that if the cluster is distributed equally it will be good i can say with the distribution so the clusters you can see the c1 c2 and c3 is not equally distributed Yeah, it depends on your goal okay. what is your goal let's say i want to make the cluster in the equally distributed but this on this one is not equally distributed then yeah you can change what is the best method to make the cluster in the equal distribution okay. but it seems all the methods do not give you a good distribution are you single? This is more bad. So the distribution is not good with single. Then if it is not that good, yeah, it means maybe hierarchical clustering is not the proper clustering for this data set because of the data properties not that good for the hierarchical cluster. We can use the k-means and we can proceed to the next step with the k-means. So if you have the question, select the best approach. Again, this is very subjective. And explain the meaning of the clustering. So once you select, let's say I'm choosing what, yeah, you can make another scatter plot. And in this scatter plot, again, you can look at this uh, properties. If it is C1, okay, it shows the high horsepower and high displacement. In the C2, it is in the middle. And then if it is C3, it is in the lower part. So the clustering gives you a very distinct data. So they are separated in the different groups. Now we have this question. Let the MPG, which is higher than the average, is categorized as high, and otherwise 
No. Do the decision tree and explain the tree. So last time, I guess she already did this one. Okay, we can do the feature constructor. Oh, I still have those. Okay. So I'm using this one. The MPG. If it is higher than 23.515, which is the min, then it will be categorized as high. Else, it is one, it means it is low. So we have the MPG category. After we have this one, then we can make the proper selection of the data. We can select column. Okay, we exclude MPG and we include MPG category to make the classification. We can make the tree and then we can create the preview. Let's make the tree as only four levels. So you can explain this tree. And then, after you can explain this tree, now the question is about the self supervised learning. What is the self supervised learning? We want to check this on the data properties. So we do not have any target and we just use the observation, let the observation group. So select the proper features. So let's say I'm just using all the data, all the column okay. from the feature constructor. Okay, let me just use the select column, and then I will not use this MPG cap. Okay. And then I'm going to make the let's say just schemes. So the previous one, you know, select the proper features. We need to do the classification. And okay, we need to compare with the problem 3B. So the problem 3B is the explain the tree. Okay. Then I can just say that let's make the cluster is two because the first previous problem, we assume that we have only two class, high and low. Then we can make the clustering with the k equals to two. After we have the k equals to two, we can make the tree. Uh, maybe it's better to select column. So in the select column, we can put the cluster into the target. After we have the clusters as the target, then we can make the tree. After we can make the tree, we can create the tree viewer. And okay, this is the result. So is it the same with the tree that we created in the tree B? So the tree is different. So when we do the self-supervised learning, there might be some changes like this one because we cannot distinguish clearly about this one. So what does it mean by this? In this case, you need to check. Maybe the result of the chemist is the same like 
the upper part here. The result is the same like this one. Now, in this case, the key means is the best is two here. So, yeah, the indicator here is the uh, thing. It is more distinctive in the horsepower and uh, displacement. Yeah. But in this three viewer, okay, the first attribute that this thing about the MPG is the displacement. And the second is the model year. But if you look at this one, the first is cylinder. So it means you may have some issues with the features. Then yeah, you need to select what is the best features for your calculation. Because in the k-means, they use only the numerical data. They do not include the most of this category box. Then yeah, you can do something like this one. With the k-means, you exclude everything. And then after that, you can combine later before creating the tree. So this is the simple result. So you can see that the displacement is the most distinctive attribute. Because the result of the clustering is based on the numerical attribute only, not the categorical data. Okay. Yeah, I guess I will give you this kind of assignment next week yeah. and you may review how to solve this problem. Yeah, in this section, we learn about the partitioning method, we learn about the hierarchical methods, and in other parts, in another PowerPoint, I will explain about the density base and how to evaluate the clustering. Yeah, any questions?